Hi, so we're going to go through the steps necessary to set up and download uh, VMware Workstation and Ubuntu in order to be able to uh, develop code for your projects this semester. The first thing we're going to do is start off with the Windows machine and I need to get VMware Workstation installed. If you already have VMware Workstation installed, uh, you can skip this step. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the department website, www.cs.ship.edu, and I can now navigate through this website, uh, go through the link to current students, go through the link to department resources, um, scroll down this impressive list, and find the VMware Academic Program. And when I click on this link, it will take me to a login page that is used to make sure that only our students have access to uh, the software. For your email address, um, you put in the email address. I have a weird email address and a super secret password. And I'll be taken to a website um, that should look like this. It should say the VMware Academic Resources page. And in this case, I'm a student. I go to students and I'll navigate to software and under software I'll see the VMware Workstation 11. Choosing that I can now add this to my shopping cart and I can see now that I can do uh, checkout. So I'll go ahead and check out. There's an end user license to agree to. Um, Put in your name, and now you can proceed with your order. What will happen now is you'll get a link for a download link, and on the campus network, uh, this seems to come in um, pretty quickly. This is a 300 gig, or sorry, 300 megabyte package. It takes about uh, two or three minutes to download. In the meantime, I want to take a look back at this receipt tab and verify that I've got a product key. We'll need to use that product key to register uh, VMware once it's finished installing. While we're waiting for this, if when you click on the VMware Academic Program, if the login page does not come up, Part of what's gone on is the login page, the server that that login page uses is not available through the campus firewall. And so part of what we'll need to do, or what you would need to do, is either download the software while you're on campus, just the VMware, or you would need to access the university's website, our website in this case, through our VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network. And what it does is it runs some software, this OpenVPN software, on your personal machine. And then any traffic that's destined for our campus goes through the VPN. Um, and there's a special uh, access through the firewall that allows that to happen. So when the VPN is configured, it's as if your computer were plugged into our network uh, here in the department. Um, and that can be really, really handy. So I have now a VMware workstation executable. Um, I'll bring up the uh, product key that they've given me. Uh, I'll copy and paste it, and now I'll run the executable. And then it's just a simple matter of following the installation instructions. Typically here, just clicking next a whole bunch of times. Click on typical, click on next, sure, 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 continue. And so at this point, VMware will um, install a bunch of files to my computer. For those who are unfamiliar with what VMware does, VMware uh, allows you to run other operating systems as a virtual machine. And what that means is the guest operating system thinks it's running on a real machine. VMware 
uh, through software is able to pretend to be the hardware of that guest machine. Uh, that's what we mean by virtualization. That's virtual hardware. So when the guest operating system tries to read and write a disk file, um, it's actually going through VMware, and VMware translates that hardware request um, for a hard drive um, into reading and writing from a file on your host computer. So when we talk about guest and host, we're talking about the guest is the operating system we're going to install, and the host is your physical real machine. In this case, my host is a Windows 10 machine. My guest is a Linux machine. While VMware is able to do this virtualization uh, very effectively, um, it also takes advantage of being able to install software in the guest operating system that expands the functionality between the two. So for example, once we've installed the guest operating system, uh, we'll be able to access files and folders on the host machine, um, as, however we configure it. All right, so at this point, we want to paste our license key um, it looks like maybe I'm getting an error because the first character I typed in was a space. Um, let's make sure that I have all the last ones in there. Alright, and now we can hit finish. So, at this point, I'm done downloading VMware Workstation. What I now need to do is get the uh, Linux Ubuntu installer. I can close these tabs. I don't need them anymore. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Ubuntu, and Google will take me to a link and let me download Ubuntu Desktop. Um, I will just click on Download, and I don't feel like downloading or I donating any money today, so let me just have the download. So this says it's going to take several hours. Um, I actually already have this already downloaded, um, so we'll skip to this download step here um, for now. One thing that you can do is if you want, you can download under desktop, you can choose a different download path and you can download it using BitTorrent. Um, if you have access to um, fast connection, BitTorrent can greatly accelerate this process. So normally you let this finish. Um, I'm going to grab the um, Ubuntu installer image and copy it right onto my machine. I have it on a different disk. Okay. So at this point now, we are ready to actually create the guest operating system. So I will run VMware Workstation. Um, it says we have an evaluation period that ends in 419 days. Um, that's because we get a slightly over one year um, license. Um, through this academic program, um, and that should be plenty for what we're doing. And next year, you can always get another copy. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to expand this so I can see the whole screen, and we're going to follow the instructions here to create a new virtual machine. Um, we'll choose typical, and it needs to know where the operating system's image is coming from. It's coming from that Ubuntu ISO file that we've just downloaded, and mine's on my desktop. Um, and so now I'll hit next. And at this point, VMware is going to look at the installation image and it's going to see that it's an Ubuntu installer and it knows how to install that. So we can give uh, information now to allow us to configure this machine. So I'll put my name in, make a username for myself, and give myself a password. Um, we can choose where we're going to store the virtual machine, and we can give it a name. So, CSVM, or something that is meaningful to you. It wants to know how big the hard drive that we want to create. 20 gigs is more than sufficient. Um, it won't actually use 20 gigs on your disk unless you actually use 20 gigs in the virtual machine. Um, even though we're allowing 20 gigs of disk space, um, it'll typically use one or two gigs until you really start to try to fill it up. If you think you might fill it up, we can go ahead and make it much larger. 
Um, we can review this. Um, we can uh, make some changes if we choose. I'm looking at the memory here, and I think that might be a little slim for what we want. So I'm going to click on Customize Hardware, and we're going to go to Memory, and I'm going to make it... Um, you know, two gigs is kind of nice. Um, that'll certainly ease up the pressure when we're running the big Eclipse application. If you have a machine with lots of memory going up to maybe three or four gigs, um, will certainly give you more performance. Um, so you can slide that up as much as you want. Um, and so we can set that setting, and then we can even choose however many processors you want to give to the, um, the virtual machine. We're not going to worry about anything else at this point. Um, increasing the memory is going to make this thing run lightning fast. So we'll hit finish. So at this point, what's going to happen is VMware is going to install. Um, it's going to run through the Ubuntu installation process. And um, it's going to take you know, several minutes for Ubuntu to configure itself. On um, a reasonably fast machine, you know, something maybe three or four years old or newer, um, it might take 15 minutes. Um, it does download things from the internet, so if you have a fast internet connection, it will certainly be faster. But for the most part, this is going to be a completely automated process. Um, so the VMware installer actually is running the Ubuntu installation process for us. So um, we'll go ahead and let this thing run. I'm not going to uh, show all these steps. We'll kind of fast forward through them. And we will resume when we have a working Linux installation. Okay, so the virtual machine has finished installing. Um, we are ready to log in and begin. So at this point, um, I'll put my super secret password in. And this first time, it should take a couple seconds uh, as it creates my desktop and my home directory and all of my space. Okay, so we're now ready to begin interacting with the virtual machine. Um, despite the fact that it just woke up, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, make some changes. And the first change I want to make is I want to expose some of my host computer, my Windows computer, files to the virtual machine. It'll make it a little bit easier for us to uh, copy files back and forth. And so if I go here to VM, I can go to Settings. And under Settings, we can go here to Options. And under Options, I can go to um, Shared Folders. Right now, it's disabled. Um, but we can go ahead and turn it on. And I'm going to add a folder. And what I'm going to add is my home directory, or maybe my Documents folder, or whatever, honestly, whatever you want to do. So there's my uh, Windows Home folder. And I'm going to finish and hit OK. And to access those files now, I can go here to the file browser. And I can go to my computer. And they're going to be kind of hidden. They're hidden in this MNT folder. MNT is a, a Unixism for mounted folders, or mounted systems. If I go into here, I'll see that I have HGFS. This is the guest file system. There's my T-Briggs folder, and there are all of my Windows files and folders. So now it's very easy to copy and paste and move, you know, copy files from one to the other. It's also really easy to do some damage, because these are those protected Windows files that you would never want to whack. Um, but it's kind of fun sometimes if you're kind of hacked to be able to see these things. All right. So there's your shared folder. That'll be helpful. Um, I want to now go back. And 
Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually install Eclipse. To install Eclipse, I'm going to click on the Start Launcher here. Maybe. Looks like that. And I can actually type in here instead of trying to browse around. I'm just going to type. And I'm going to look for a program called Terminal. And when I run the Terminal program, I'm going to get a command window. And this command window will allow me to interact with the uh, operating system at a pretty low level. And what I need to do is I need to install the software. Um, the software we're looking for here is called Eclipse-CDT. That's the package name that I need to install. And the way that you install packages is to use, well, there's a couple different ways. There's a graphical tool, but really we're going to just use this command line so that everybody's got the right point. So we're going to um, do this. I need to first get access to the system as a super user, as the root user, because I need to install system level software. So I'll do sudo, and I can do app-get, that's the command to, to get software, install software. I've got to tell it I want to install it, and the package I want is cdt. So app-get install eclipse-cdt, I put my password in, and it will figure out everything that I need to have to be able to run Eclipse. And so when it says you want to continue, we say yes, and it will go ahead and uh, download all of these packages. Um, now it actually needs to download um, a, a pretty fair chunk of stuff. Um, in fact, it tells me here I'm going to need to download 280 megabytes of additional stuff. Um, on a modern computer, that's not too much, um, but it is going to take a few minutes to download. The other way that we could have done it is we could have used the Ubuntu Software Center. And if I go into that, I'll find that there's a um, browsable way to kind of browse through the different software packages. Um, but it's um, kind of a pain while I'm actually trying to install, uh, install the command. But if you want, you can see what other kinds of cool programs are out there. There really are um, thousands of applications available for Linux, and they're all for free. So if I want to quit this program, I just hover up here to the taskbar, and I can just go ahead and click the yes and make it go away. Um, same thing if I was here in my uh, file browser, I can go up here and click the, the red X, and it goes away. Uh, I don't want to do that to terminal. Um, I'll do where I am. So I'll let this run for a few minutes. Um, it says it has five minutes to go, seven minutes to go, five minutes to go, it bounces back and forth. Uh, but when this is done, uh, we'll resume. Okay, so at this point, um, the app get install has finished. Um, it took about seven minutes. Um, the, 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 the estimate of time was actually pretty accurate. Um, and at this point, we can verify that everything works. Um, simply by typing in from the command line Eclipse. Um, the first time it runs, it might take a few seconds for, again, for workspaces to be created, uh, for everything to be initialized. Um, but we should see the familiar Eclipse banner here in just a second, and we will be ready to start coding. Um, the first question it's going to ask is, where do you want your workspace? Um, if you want to keep your workspace in the virtual machine, which is not a bad idea, um, we can go ahead and hit OK. There was some concern about this being an older version of Eclipse. And for everything we're going to be doing, uh, we are in great shape. Click on Start the Workbench. And um, at this point, uh, the only other thing we want to do to prepare where we're ready to go is to go here to Window. We're going to go to Open Perspective, and we're going to go to C, C++. This is the C++ perspective that we're going to want to use. Um, and to kind of verify things work, I'll just put a new C project. Um, we'll do a makefile project with Linux GCC. We'll call this test. And I'll come in here. Uh, I'll make a new file. You know, this interface is actually getting kind of hard to use. Um, I'm going to actually stop this for just a second, and I'm going to go up here to View. First, we're going to go to View, and we're going to go to Full Screen. And what this is going to do is let me see 
the system full screen um, as opposed to in a window. Uh, I get much more screen real estate this way. The other thing that's going on here is this thing is pinned. And I'm going to unpin it. To get it back, I just have to hover my mouse up at the very top of the screen, and it should come back here. Um, and then I can move my mouse back down and it will go away. All right, so now um, we're using Eclipse with a lot more space. So right click, we're going to go up here to New. I'm going to choose a file. I'm going to do this make file that we've been using in class to help control our builds. And it starts off with cc equals gcc, c flags equals dash g, and exes equals, and then we're going to list the executables that we want. We're going to put in test. I save that file. Over here in the uh, make file targets, um, I'll click here and we'll add one for all. And I'll click here and add one for clean. Now I haven't written any code yet, so we're going to make a file called test.c. That's a source file. And So um, I make sure that both my files are saved, so I can just save them individually or click up here on the save all. Um, click over here to build, check the console to make sure that everything was built correctly. Oh, I forgot to slip in my make file. In my make file, I must say one more target here. I need to say target all depends on the exe C. Make has this weird convention that if I declare a variable, I just use it. Um, to get its value, I do this dollar sign, parentheses, execs. Okay. So now I can save all my files. I can go to all. And it made the executable. And now I should be able to run as. And there it is. So we have made a virtual machine, virtual Linux. Uh, installation with Eclipse um, completely under the control of uh, VMware. Um, you now have a completely standalone, completely your own Ubuntu Linux machine that you can do with as you wish. Remember, it's not a bad idea to use the capabilities of the virtual machine. So we're going to get that window back. And I'm going to go back and put this thing into um, regular screen instead of being full screen. Um, and what we can do, we can actually take some, uh, uh, we can actually help ourselves here. We can take a snapshot of this machine and that snapshot will allow me to um, essentially make a backup, an instantaneous backup. So now that I've taken a snapshot of the machine, um, if for some reason I need to uh, undo something, all I've got to do is come back to my snapshot and I can revert to whatever snap, I can pick whatever snapshots I want. So this is a great, um, great way of helping yourself in case you make a mistake when you're doing something on the system. You can go back to any point in time. Um, the other thing that we can do is instead of having to power down this machine, I can just put it to sleep. And I can even exit out of VMware Workstation. Um, if I run VMware Workstation again, uh, there's my virtual machine. I click on Resume. We'll see it restore. And I'm back to right where, I, where I left off. It's kind of like if you have a laptop and you close the lid. Uh, VMware is just suspending the virtual machine. And when you restore it, it's like opening the lid on your laptop. <clears throat> there are many other really cool features and tools you can use here with VMware. Probably the best one is the online documentation. Uh, it's there for a reason. 
take advantage of it and becoming an expert with this VMware tool um, can certainly help. There it is. Good luck with your programming assignments.